Welcome. Welcome very, very much to Conversations, where I'm very pleased to welcome to the program Dr. Christine Durbach. And uh, Dr. Durbach is a, well, psycho uh, psychoanalyst, a uh, psychiatrist, and uh, is uh, very much interested in, um, beyond that, in uh, recent, more recent aspects of her life, in ecological concerns. She's involved with a program, World Information Transfer, a very meaningful ecologically oriented distribution of information on ecological questions. And Dr. Durbeck, welcome very much to Conversations Indeed. Thank you, Mr. Chana. It's a pleasure to be here. I wonder if you might share with us, you, as, as, uh, to, to be a, a psychiatrist, much less a psychoanalyst, is a very long, involving process, I know. And, uh, but I want to maybe share it in, in, a, in a personal way without going in full depth, but in some depth, to how you went from being concerned with psychoanalysis, which is usually, one thinks, very much concerned with the individual trauma and problems of a particular individual, to this very large-scale ecological concern that you have. But maybe you could share, in a sense, your own, your own personal background, if you could, for us. Certainly. I'll be very happy to. I, uh, uh, in 1986, uh, I was doing some experimental work with Dr. Nikolai de Klerba, who is an orthopedic surgeon in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, uh, dealing with hyperbaric medicine, and that is the treatment of anaerobic infections with uh, high oxygen. And uh, the hyperbaric chambers are very similar to the MRI units. And uh, uh, so we were experimenting. We're using relaxation techniques for the patients. Mm -hmm. And Chernobyl happened. And I was very affected by it. And I decided uh, that um, besides working individually with uh, patients in a psychoanalytic milieu that uh, I would like to do something on a broader scale and uh, make uh, professionals uh, aware of the ramification of environmental degradation and human health. I see, yeah, I see. And yeah, we didn't mention, get a chance to mention in the introduction that you are also very involved uh, or have been involved with stress alleviation, particularly within the corporate Yes. Community, so that work you're doing in Yugoslavia related to the human psychological stress involved with the stressful situations, and so you got a sense of that as far as Chernobyl is concerned. That's definitely correct. Um, so you had good training for understanding what creates a sense of dis-ease, let's say, in the human psyche individually, and that it was affecting a great number of people. So yeah, that was a good grounding training to be concerned with the dis-ease that many feel collectively in terms of the ecological condition, right? That's true, and uh, one of the um, difficult parts in broadening the scope of understanding the relationship between uh, environmental degradation and human health is that most people really are not aware of it. It's almost like using denial on many, many levels. Um, just like we do not, people do not want to be aware of the nuclear uh, threat, uh, especially during the Cold War, mm -hmm. and people do not want to be aware of the symptomatology of various disasters, uh, like the Oklahoma disaster that happened, or like uh, the Holocaust, or like. Uh, uh, the hunger, uh, Stalin-induced hunger. Uh, you can go on during right. this uh, century, right. the many devastating effects. And in this case, I consider Chernobyl one of the um, devastating holocausts of this uh, century. Mm, yeah, and, and the, the, the depletion of the ozone layer, which the is The depletion of the ozone layer, important. the global warming, uh, yeah. the deterioration of our um, flora and fauna, mm -hmm. the oceans. But it's much easier for people to be concerned with uh, saving the whales, which is very important yeah. um, in itself, rather than to be aware of that the nuclear fallout affected uh, millions of people. Yeah, and that was, in a certain sense, as I would suggest, that was, in a certain sense, what we call a wake-up call or an alarm clock awaking yeah. us to the condition. Uh, one other analogy that is used, it seems to me, is the the analogy of the frog in a pant pond of water, where yes. if you put him in a boiling water, he'll jump out. If the water just heats up slowly, 
they'll just accommodate them. That's right. I presume human beings have the same problem in terms of understanding mounting, slowly mounting uh, uh, crisis situation that is growing. Very true, mm -hmm. very true. And uh, one of the problems with Chernobyl catastrophe is that people often think, well, it happened over there. But the problem is that the fallout affected not only Eastern Europe and parts of Western Europe, but it went all the way to Canada. And there were also some effects in uh, one cell animals dying in San Francisco. So it, it is of such magnitude. Um, but as I said, there's so many factors that are affecting our health. And as you know, we have a great deal of increase in cancer and all various kind of diseases. And people do not want to be aware of the, the air that they are breathing might not be of the quality that is uh, the best for them. Yeah, and you have a particular concern with that, uh, with that it triggered it in you, uh, yeah. Chernobyl, and it did, and many people, it did, it triggered yes, it did. a notice, because that, that's the greatest uh, uh, disaster that we've had in terms of electric generating power right. systems based on, 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 you know, on the atomic uh, process. You think there's, it's ill-conceived? We, we did have Hiroshima, Nagasaki, yes. all of the nuclear testings. We had thermal nuclear testing in the Marshall Islands, yes. where people were allowed to be downwind to test yes. the, you know, we've had this history of that, but the, the, the nuclear power plants themselves have low level radiation, a problem of waste disposal and so forth. Do you think it's a problem that's not as well understood by, let's say, the world community as perhaps you feel it ought to be? Um, I would agree with that, mm -hmm. uh, even though, you know, in particular in Ter Chernobyl, that's the RBMK reactors, which are very, very dangerous, mm -hmm. and they were basically used to make plutonium uh, so for weapons. Uh, uh, um, people, even though the nuclear industry is really, I would say, trying valiantly to reduce the threat, but the most um, the most problem um, problematic area with this is that there are still no safe way of getting rid of plutonium, which has a half-life of 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. We certainly uh, have not found a way either to get rid of the nuclear waste uh, or to um, ens ensure that there's not going to be any further uh, catastrophes like Chernobyl, mm. especially in Eastern Europe. Not to mention, if one might, you know, not to mention the, the plutonium contained in the 50,000 odd warheads that are in yes. existence and have the same yes. half-life. And There's a question of how that genie is, since Mr. Albert Einstein wrote the formula in the developments, have, that genie is out of the bottle. Yes, it is. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major problem, whether we can run the arms race backwards somehow or some way is, a, is another question. But these ecological concerns, there are, th that is a major one, the, the major one it perhaps is, that yes. confronts yes. us. There are these others, ozone depletion, gas, greenhouse gases, and the whole question of uh, the, the ecological deterioration of the environment around it. You're concerned with all of these. It was the Chernobyl, that, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And also you're very concerned, and one thing we want to stress is in getting the best comprehensive understanding of the best minds that understand these things in a systems way and to distribute that information because as in any field there's a great deal of rumor and misinformation. And you want to get good information, hence world information transfer. Yes. Uh, yes. yes uh, we of started. Of high quality, yes. Well, oh, they, absolutely. Yeah. I think that that's very important to have information that is factual. Yes. And uh, there is not adequacy, but actually, as a scientist, uh, I would like to be able to distribute information that is factual and accru accurate. And so uh, we publish quarterly uh, the World Ecology Report. Maybe we could, I have a copy, yes, you do. Yes, I'll, I'll show a do. copy of it in a minute. Go ahead, if you keep talking. Go ahead. You have uh, a copy of it. With I have a, one, let's show it. Yes, with a very, uh, what well, this one is uh, 
uh, we, on we have the, time. When you get a chance, right. you can come in tight on this. And um, this is a quarterly, you say? This is a quarterly, right. Uh -huh. And we discuss uh, mostly the, um, well, this one particularly is on man-made environmental disasters. Uh -huh. And we talk about Bhopal and uh, Chernobyl and uh, the various uh, major ecological di uh, disasters that happened, the bothered oil spill, um, which has affected so much of the, uh, you know, pristine um, uh, part of uh, Alaska. Alaska. So um, the environmental information and its relationship to health is something that unfortunately gets very, very little attention. Um, and I think it gets very little attention, as I m mentioned before, because people do not want to be aware that something that they really have very little control of, but basically the governments have control of, is affecting their health. I don't, I, I don't want to make any presumptions, because I certainly wouldn't be able to back it up, but uh, we do have, you're psychoanalytically trained, and there are events going on in the unconscious and in the id and other parts of the mind that we don't want to be aware of. And it might be, that in a certain sense, there's an analogy on an individual basis with the larger pattern. And yet, the more we can understand those things, the better we might be able to function at a conscious or... I, I don't know if there's an analogy or not to be I, drawn. Yes, there mm -hmm. is. Uh, people do use a lot of denial in trying to escape uh, realization of what is going on. Uh, we, we tend to look at things through uh, rose-colored glasses, and uh, it is difficult. It really is very difficult to take them off. It is exactly, to give you an al analogy, is to looking in the mirror and seeing yourself exactly the way you are. <laughs> it's very, very <laughs> difficult. Yes, indeed. You know, yeah. uh, from the purely aesthetic point of view, you have to go to a makeup artist yes. who tells you, oh, well, you have a flaw there and flaw mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Or you go to a psychoanalyst and tell uh, well, I feel this way, yes. and then you know how long it takes to the process of helping an individual become aware of how his or her characterological difficulties affect the way they are doing things. Well, it's the same thing on, I believe, on a national scale or an international scale. And an international, maybe a global, a global scale. And, and because, again, these, uh, these trends, these ecological movements, I mean, uh, uh, we, we, we did have the Rio conference, which I presume was heartening, at least in its being called. What we were able to achieve is another question. And some concepts of sustainable development, people are reaching for this kind of thing. But, uh, but uh, you know, we have, this, uh, we have this difficulty confronting us. Uh, we, we, live in, we, live in a, we live in a time where all the changes and the technological developments and these things are growing so quickly, almost exponential uh, over the long haul of the human history. Technology is ro growing so quickly now in the last hundred years or so. Um, are you, are you, are you, let me just ask a general question. Are you generally optimistic in terms of the human prospect that we can find our way through to some sort of a way of appropriately relating to the technology in the broader echo sphere? Or, or do you think that there's a, a real danger that we could go over some sort of a precipice as some people do? I just wonder generally what your feeling is and what you're driven by in a certain sense to do the, 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 the work that you do, which is very, you know, outstanding. Uh, well, yes, I'm definitely an optimist, okay. and um, I remember many years ago when I was doing my undergraduate work at uh, New York University, uh, we had a professor, Cummings, and he used to say, young people, communication is going to change the world. Yes. You know, at that time when mm -hmm. you're 18, 19, yes. It looks fine, yes. but, uh, you know, at that time with the television booming, you think, all right. But I think so. I really believe that uh, a great indicator of how communication can affect uh, the international climate uh, uh, is uh, our ability to relate and our uh, ability to interchange ideas and thoughts. And uh, of course, with the superhighway, with email, with uh, um, camcorders, etc., you know as well as I do, it's so much easier to be able to broadcast meaningful information, which uh, then can be used effectively toward uh, 
better understanding. It's, the point is of getting that information and helping people understand that it is within their realm and it is their responsibility to change things. Because if you can give the people information, then they have the power to elect the officials who have the power to be able to change the process of doing things. Mm -hmm. um, do, do, do you think it's important that the information that be communicated, let's just take that as a premise, we're going to communicate information, it's important, again, in a systems way. Yes. Often, if you're in a subsystem of a system, there will seem to be trauma. But if you see a whole pattern, you'll be able to see in a larger systems way uh, developments with an organism or with a, presumably with a with an ecosystem, that, that there be comprehensive, the, the most relevant information, the best information be made available? And is there a problem of there being a great deal of uh, rumor, misinformation, um, tabloid kinds of considerations, oh, I, I, and so forth? And uh, again, coming back to your world information transfer, you're trying to get the most responsible perception, if I'm correct, and the most comprehensively relevant systems understanding of this. And it's important to find that. And do we have people, in your view, that are able to provide us with that information so we know well what to do in terms of trying to set policy as we begin to move ahead? Or do we still have to grasp to find policy and, and just even at the level of scientific understanding of what we need to know? I, I just wonder. You know. Well, I think that we have a tremendous amount of knowledge, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the problem, again, is getting it out to the right people. And um, in 1992, I started an annual um, conference uh, on health and environment, global partners for global solutions, which every year focuses on a different area of importance. And what we do, we gather well, it's not only myself, um, it's uh, uh, Ambassador Alexander Borges Olivier and Dr. Bernard Goldstein, mm -hmm. uh, who is the director of the Environmental Institute uh, in the New Jersey Medical School. Mm -hmm. uh, we put on a program where we invite uh, top experts in the field uh, so that they can bring in their findings and discussions at the United Nations. It's held at the United Nations because I feel that that's a wonderful forum for getting a global um, Systems. system out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so this year it's going to be on June 8th and 9th and it is co-sponsored this year uh, by the government of Brazil. In the previous years, it was co-sponsored by the government of Malaysia, the government of Egypt, the government of Ukraine. What I try to do is go around the world. <laughs> yes, right. And uh, um, we are going to be focusing on health in the metropolis. In other words, uh, how does the um, health, uh, how is health affected by the inner cities? because we know in the inner cities the pollution is higher in some cases than the countryside. Of course, it depends where the countryside is. Yes, indeed, right. Yeah. Uh, if you're in, around the Chernobyl area, you know it isn't very the healthy, countryside. Yeah, right. uh, so that is what we try to do every year. And this year it's a two-day conference rather than one-day conference. Oh, Next good. year, um, which is going to be the 10th year anniversary of Chernobyl, mm -hmm. I'm hoping to have a, either a two- or three-day conference on that topic. Yeah, oh, that's very good that you're able to do that. And then the people come together. And then there, there are, uh, and excuse me, I'm not that familiar, there are some leading lights, as it were, who can understand uh, the, the ecological formula or the yes. ecological equation yes. perhaps better than some others. Uh, oh, there's no question. Yeah, there's, that's what that's what I'm in a sense getting at. Yeah. You're really trying to get it from. There's an old American expression from the horse's mouth, from yeah. the from the best, as yes. it were. Yes, and the because best. there is some confusion, isn't there, among and and among well-intentioned people, some people actually think there is no particular problem, you know, and they need to be educated. But then there needs to. You, you understand what I'm getting? I at? understand, and I think the people that believe that there is no problem are the people that, as uh, I mentioned before, that are really afraid of confronting it. Mm -hmm. It's like having your 
head in the sand like an ostrich. There is a problem. There's no question there's a problem. We, we know that. We know that from the EPA research. We know that from UNEP research. We, we know that there is research that is daily uh, published uh, either in the front pages or back pages of New York Times and various uh, United Nations monographs and various scientific papers. We definitely know that there is a deterioration in the environment and that it is affecting human health. There's no question about that. Uh, Dr. Eric Shivian, who is the head of the Physicians for Social Responsibility, uh, three years ago, um, uh, they received an, uh, the, his group received the Nobel Peace Prize based on the work with finding the relationship between health and nuclear contamination. Mm -hmm. So we have the information. It's just, it's not as, um, uh, it is not as fascinating as some of the uh, legal trials that we have on television. Yeah, isn't it a shame that they waste their time with those kind of things yes. in a certain sense. But you, you have, uh, sometimes you have a trade-off, again, in a systems way, of people who might say the ecological problems of the snail darter or the spotted owl, which they want to save a, uh, an ecosystem or a pristine ecosystem for them, is not as important as the jobs and livelihood of people. And we have to think about people and economic sustenance of people, sustained development. And there's also the question of uh, ecology. I mean, there is a developed world. We live well by and large. Much of the world does not. And some people say, well, it's fine for people who are living well that we're not going to have development. We're just going to stay pristine and let the world stay poor. But the world that is poor has a right to want material progress, do they not? And is it a question of finding a sustainable ability where we don't ask those people who have been traditionally poor to stay poor in order that we can stay rich and using up so much of the Earth's resources in the developed world. There's a question of equity among the peoples of the world, isn't there? And isn't that part of the ecological uh, responsibility uh, in a certain sense? The leadership responsibility, the ecological. Uh, so I, absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, the problem between the North, the haves and the have-nots is a very big problem. But it is uh, a problem that is mitigated by various uh, various components. There's no question that we use more of the natural resources. And there's no question that the developing world is doubling and tripling their population growth. And we really have to put things in perspective. Um, I developed a concept with uh, a colleague of mine, Dr. Claudia Strauss, of sustainable maturity, in which we define at talking my analytic background, yes, we're right, talking exactly. about the maturation of process yes. and sustainable, we're talking mm -hmm. about the sustainable development. Mm -hmm. The concept is sustainable maturity, which actually means that the individual has the responsibility towards sustaining the health of this globe for future generations. Now, certainly it is not something that you can expect of some of an individual eking out a living mm -hmm. uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. But you can certainly expect that uh, from the people that are educated and from the people that have a sense of responsibility uh, of the things need to be addressed so that changes can be affected. Again, back to the overall theme, the overall theme of what you say is that you want to have, in a certain sense, it's, it's, it's very much of a um, a, a, uh, a seeking out of the best of our leadership of understanding, and in a certain sense, one wonders about that concept itself, the very concept of leadership. There certainly is, it, it takes a criteria by which you define human purpose in a certain sense. Some people, I mean, we are part of a barter ecosystem. We're part of a development of a process on this third planet in the cosmos. There's some purpose to human and biological development and development in this planet. And a certain aspect of that is to have a comprehensive and conscious, perhaps, understanding of the process of which we are a part is part of that purpose. And that's the criteria by which we could decide who our leading philosophers or who our leading uh, people are in terms of uh, the human condition. 
And one context of understanding is that ecological context that many people feel very often on the business side of things, for instance, that ecological context is not appropriately taken into account because they're just looking at short-term quarter profit statements and so forth, and they will rape a planet in order to make a short-term profit. So that part of the business leadership, that's one part of leadership. Another part is this broader, all-encompassing ecological perception, and that's very much a part of fulfilling human leadership potentiality on the planet, don't you think? I uh, absolutely agree with you. Uh -huh. It is very important for leaders. Uh, I was absolutely delighted with uh, Senator Albert Gore was uh, elected um, because of his very strong position and his understanding of the interrelationship between environmental degradation and what is happening to the human species. Uh -huh. uh, it is also important that we realize that the earth doesn't really need us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gaia is going to uh, survive no matter what. Gaia, but, yes. That's right. Yes, that's but, um, that's right. Mm. But we need, we need a certain balance. We need a certain combination uh, to be able to survive. And uh, this is uh, the, the main focus that has to be sort of uh, wedged in the consciousness of the intelligent public. And in turn, in, in, in turn, one would hope, again, in an ecological or democratic sense. After all, Gaia says that we are an organism, and an organism is a whole system, and each of the cells of the organism are important and they all need to be healthy in order to have an overall healthy organism. You, and certainly you're well aware of that as yes. somebody psychoanalytically trained, yes, absolutely. that the whole system has to, if you have one cell that's doing very well and it's running away, that's just called cancer. I mean, if it's not in touch with the rest of the organism, and this is just part of the beginning wisdom of, uh, that we all ought to be grasping as we, understand, as we begin to move into this new era. New challenging time, isn't it? It's a new and challenging time right now as we sit and talk and coming up to the end of the millennium with the tremendous destructive capability, both direct and perhaps more dangerously, this slow building up of the degradation of the environment, fouling of our nest and so forth. But yet on the other hand, with the, tech, with the extended communications and understanding, there might be a new kind of liberating possibility that could be very exciting to you as a psychoanalytically inclined person in terms of that could be applied not only to an individual, but to uh, the, the whole of the human species, perhaps. Or to, do you understand what I'm saying? It's a yes. time of qualitative transformation, perhaps. Well, I, I definitely believe that we are capable of uh, changing things and improving things if we are aware of it. Um, it's uh, well known that uh, in order to have insight, and, and to be able to change anything, you have to go through a process of awareness. Mm -hmm. And so that, that awareness uh, brings you the insight that you need to change a certain pattern of behavior. Mm -hmm. As a psychoanalyst, I work with that all yes. the time. Yes. Uh, and uh, that, I think, is very important in doing on the global level that you mentioned about, to, to, so that the leaders become aware of it, that they have the responsibility, that people uh, have put the responsibility into their hands and they have to carry it. And, if I may, that there is another quality of leadership which is the leadership of understanding, which I may if suggest is something that you have assumed in a certain degree, you and the colleagues that you work with, from this ecological perspective. You've taken upon yourself to present in a certain sense a, a quality of leadership that is not perhaps often thought of in terms of immediate political control and business control and so forth, but it's a quality of leadership that greater people, uh, you know, uh, resonate to in a certain sense. This ecological definition of human purpose and leadership in terms of understanding that. And I just want to congratulate you and all your work. Wish you the very, very best with the conference coming up in June and uh, happy to let people know about World Ecological Report and the, and the organization World Information Transfer Incorporated that you've uh, had a leadership role in establishing. That is part of the world leadership pattern. And uh, we could suggest 
if we may. So I just want to thank you really very, very much. Thank you very much for having me. I, it's been delightful. It has been delightful talking yes. with you, and it's been your pleasure, then, I would say, in the uh, audience to have the perceptions in of Dr. Christine Durbach. She's chair, chair of the uh, Wor World, um, Information. World Information Transfer uh, Incorporated, and also they put out the World Ecological Report and sponsored these very interesting conferences at the UN, one of which is coming up this year in June 19. 60, uh, uh, 1999. Happy to be able to bring you those perceptions. Stay tuned. There'll be more coming up in the general topic area of world leadership patterns and how we might be able to help move Spaceship Earth in the right direction uh, momentarily. That's it for this program. Dr. Durbeck, all the very, very best to you as you be move into this information environment you're hoping to create. And uh, thank you really very much for participating in conversation. Thank you. Please stay tuned. We'll be coming right back. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back very much to Conversation. I'm pleased to welcome to the program David Hurwitz, and he is the uh, publisher of an extremely, to my way of thinking, an extremely interesting array of publications which collectively are known as the uh, Leadership Directories, and Correct. it's Leadership Directories, Inc., and uh, right. David Hurwitz, welcome very, very much to Conversations and to uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Thank you. I wonder if you can. I was taken, as I called you on the phone, contacted you when I had become in contact with a, uh, a, mag a, a, a publication. This one, we have a copy of one of your publications, this one being uh, uh, like yeah. in the, pa in the direct, uh, yellow pages of the phone book. This one happens to be congressional, and we're going to talk about it. But I had come in contact with one that was directed toward the media. Right. And I was very taken with and excited because you had in there information about the personalities and the people who made up the media world that That's was true. extremely enlightening to me because it was just right up to date. But I wonder, maybe if you could share with us, uh, Leadership um, Directories Incorporated, when did it get started? What is your charge? And uh, maybe you could share a little bit of your, the background of the whole organization okay. if you could. We were founded about 20 years ago by two men, Donald Petrie and Robert Townsend and the company was started in Washington, D.C. with the Congressional Yellow Book, which is a directory of Congress, the uh, elected representatives and their staffs, the makeup of, of the committees and the committee staffs. So it's used by people who need to contact Congress, who lobbyists and others who want to get their position across to members of Congress. Mm -hmm. And from there, we developed other directories, a federal Yellow Book, a state yellow book, a corporate yellow book, until today we have 11 yellow books. You have 11 yellow books. 11 yellow books. That presents, in a certain sense, the leadership. The leadership of the, of the United of, States. The leadership of the United States. Right. That's our really goal, a very interesting concept. Our right? goal is to create a database of the leadership of the United States. So we will be adding new directories every year until we, I'm not sure where, where we're going to stop, but. <laughs> We're not, we don't see the end in sight right now. That's really very interesting. It started with the Congressional. It started right? with the Congressional. And you say 20 years ago? 20 years ago. Some time ago. And then the, the leadership changes. So obviously, it's brought, is it brought out on an annual? Is it updated uh, on an not, annual basis? Uh, the or? Congressional Yellow Book is uh, updated quarterly. I so see. So subscribers get four completely updated editions every year. And I wonder if we could uh, tick them off again. You, you've got the Congressional. You've got Corporate. Now, would that be uh, all of corporate America, or um, would you say it's corporate? It's the leading 1,000-plus uh, U.S. corporations. That includes most of the... Most of the ones that you product. know, y yes. yes. Uh -huh. Well, it, um, in our government uh, group of books, yeah. we have the congressional, the federal, the state, municipal, and federal regional, which is the federal government outside of Washington, D.C., Okay, that's uh, just for instance, if I may, just ask sure. you about the state. You have each of the, the the government organizations of the various states the, the, organizations. Yes. So there's one for Montana, 
one for Alaska, one for New York, and right. who the major figures are in the government of that state. Right. We have both the executive branch of the state governments and the legislative branch of the state governments. Oh. And you have, you have if I may, it's, it's very right. impressive. Uh, and then you have one, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, law firms. We, the major right. law firms. We, right. We, we have a law firms book, a financial book, a corporate book, a news media book, an association's book, and we have a new book out now, a government affairs book. It's really very con interesting and you, in a certain sense, and, and it's brought right up to date. So the, the vice president of purchasing or the vice president of decision making on programming on a news network or something, uh, the, the name might change from quarter That's to true. quarter, and you would bring this all up to date, and it's That's up true. to date. And you're tracking, in a certain sense, the leadership. Have you ever thought to index how many different names are there that you would have if you were to collectively put all the names that are contained in the 11 volumes into I, a uh, I think index we have, listing? I think we have about 350,000 names right about now. About 350,000 names. Right. And collectively, in a certain sense, they would represent a good deal of uh, not only the very, very top, top leadership, but a good deal of their out, their lieutenants and the people that That's true. are part of that, people That's that true. are in these processes of, uh, it's an this cannot be done without, or this couldn't be done without the miracle of uh, information processing, I presume, right? Well, it certainly helps because yeah. the books were done before uh, they weren't always done with computers, but you weren't online from the beginning, or having well, I wasn't there from the beginning, oh, so okay. I don't know. But right, okay. uh, we're not we were not as computerized as we are now. Even when I joined the company about seven years ago, I see. But now we the way we do it is each each directory has its own uh, database. We call it a microsystem that the editor uses to update the information in their directory. And then from there, it goes through a composition program, and that creates the, the hard copy directory. Uh -huh. And you have, a, you have, given the corporate structure, if I may, given the corporate structure of corporate America or legisl you know, governmental system, you have a, a ready-made grid, as it were, in terms of a, your president and CEO are obviously important, and right. then the senior vice president. You have a ready-made grid well, to identify who the names of those people are. They just fit into slots. It's that, not that always they're... a ready-made grid. Okay, uh, the, interesting. The, we try to reflect the structure of the organizations mm -hmm. in the structure of our listings. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the editors to research an organization, understand how it's organized, and then create their listing accordingly. Interesting. So in your case, for instance, our listing of the New York Times, we'll have the different uh, desks the different bureaus around the country, the different sections, uh, if they organize themselves also by the sections of the paper. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at a listing in one of our directories, you, you get an understanding of how the organization is structured, as well as learning the names of the leading people there. That's interesting. And there's a certain subjective quality to understanding on an individual basis, a particular uh, right, well, organization. I, I'm not sure if you call it subjective exactly, but That's it has to do with the talent. But nuanced, a little yes. bit nuanced, yeah. It, 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 it has to do with the talent and the hard work of the editors to yes. uh, reflect the organizations that, that they're covering. And to understand the uh, organizations that they're covering. That's in terms true. Of that, more than just trying to fit it, as I had suggested, into a ready-made grid. There's That's a little more true. nuance to it. That Some that. of the books have more ready-made grids than right. others, but the goal ultimately is to reflect the organizations. Right. And you have one, I mean, that could, that could be incredibly interesting and relevant to, to people. You have one that, has re, that, that relates to, um, that, that brings up the, the latest election returns or something that That's true. changes that have happened? Uh, well, our, our spring congressional book, which just came out, yes. has the whole new Congress uh, uh -huh. fully updated. We did create an interim directory of the new members in January, but it takes until now for Congress to become fully organized, for all the committees to be selected, for all the committee staffs to be named. Yeah, the staff people are very important. The staff people right? are very important. Yeah, they are. And it's also uh, the issues that the congressmen and women and the staff are specialized in. Mm -hmm. So you, if you look at our directories in another way, we have the leaders of 
the issues that the country faces, the leaders in healthcare, the leaders in the environment. The, because in many cases, for instance, when we, in the news media, we identify the different assignments that the reporters have. Mm -hmm. So we'll have an index of all the health reporters from the directory. Mm -hmm. In the same way, you have specialists in Congress on the health care issue, and we have lawyers from our law firm spoke who specialize in health care, and we have, of course, uh, health and human services in the, in the federal government. So at the same time as being a directories of the leading organizations in the country, we also really are directories of the leading issues facing the country. This is an incredibly complex proposition that you're involved with. Here. That's true. Is there, is there, is there cross-indexing between the systems? There is now in our CD-ROM product, uh -huh. and yeah, we're, we're really just new. Yeah. Well, um, we are. We have been traditionally publishers of hard copy directories, mm -hmm. but through a licensee, we now have a CD-ROM product in which you can search across all the directories according to a, few, uh, a subject such as health and create your own customized lists of leaders in in a certain field, perhaps in a certain region at the same time. We've, we've had traditional, uh, it's, it's inc I, I think it's incredibly interesting and important work being able to identify. It is, seems to me, nuanced. If you were to say the leaders in uh, ecology, some might say Ralph Nader is. Some people might say, well, Ralph Nader's off the ball, but somebody else over here has well, a different perspective. Well, that is true. And, you know, do you try to be comprehensive in terms of that? Or I know Brian Lamb, we've talked with with C-SPAN, he said they try to present all sides of leadership in television, and yeah. it's a very delicate line one works. You, you don't have any ideological No, bias there's no or ideological You're bias. trying to be pragmatic and practical with what That's the reality true. is, right? Yes. We, it, each book has to work out its own universe. Mm -hmm. uh, in the corporate book, for instance, it's you, it's the largest corporations in the United States. Right. In the congressional book, it's the entire Congress. Right. In other cases, we have to be selective. The law book, we focus on the largest law firms in the United States. The news media book, um, that requires more of an art to pick out what are the leading uh, media outlets, because we have to be national, and it's in one volume, mm -hmm. so we can't include everybody. Mm -hmm. And so it is, in that sense, subjective. But we're doing our best. We're, we're yeah, yeah. No, no, I commend you. <laughs> I, I, I really think you've got a leading edge concept because you're moving into an information environment. And it was Vitor Gregorian, you know, the, uh, the head of our public libraries right. at Brown University, mm -hmm. I think now, who, who said that the information, or Toffler is very popular now, the information is absolutely that's coming at us, including our leadership. It, it's kind of, it doubles every five years. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just an avalanche. And we need to have pattern recognizing capability of who the people are and what the institutions are that can begin to give a systems understanding of what's transpiring. I'm not sure if you see things that way, but it seems to me you're in a leading position of putting a grid on that reality to make it possible for people to navigate there's a term now, the superhighway, navigate, there's a term more broadly than the superhighway, the, 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 the reality structure of, of, of the human condition. And it seems to me you're in a position, you people right. are in a position of helping to, to, to forge the way there. Perhaps. I, I personally would not say that we are creating the grid. What we're trying to do is understand the way American society is organizing itself. No, I didn't say you understand. You're, you're not creating the situation, but uh, Mr. Roger put a grid on the English language. Uh, Webster put a grid on the English language with his dictionary. It right. was a way of recognizing patterns, I'm, I'm saying. The pattern right. is there, but you're giving us like a bibliographic science, that's, and that's extremely that's important in an information environment. That's I'm sorry, true. I didn't mean to interrupt No, you. no, uh, I agree Just with what you're saying. Just trying to put some kudos your way. I think you're really in a very... I, I started out personally as an anthropologist, oh, okay. and right. I studied uh, foreign cultures. Mm -hmm. And one thing I tried not to do was to put our grid onto the way they organize themselves. The idea was to understand them in their own terms mm -hmm. and, and communicate that. Mm -hmm. 
and that's the same philosophy that at least I bring to uh, the Yellow Books. Mm -hmm. the, the issue is understanding how the New York Times covers the country and reflecting how they cover the country as opposed to predetermining that we want a certain set of people and going out and getting them. Oh, I see. Really good. That's, well, that's the difference. Right, but no, then once we have collected yeah. <coughs> this huge database of the leaders of the United States, then it is up to us to properly interrelate the, the different books and the, the individuals from the different books. So that is not an easy process. That's what we're going through now. Right. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, a research project. And I commend you, and I, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you have that sense of that, that academic training and that you, you, you see this as an anthropologist. That's yes. an you see this contemporary spaceship Earth as an anthropologist. That might be an interesting way to uh, study it, you know. Uh, that sort of thing, but I, I, uh, I wonder. You said you've got eleven already, right? right? right. Uh, concept. Right. How many of you are there, if I may ask? That in the are company? In? Yeah, and particularly on this editorial side and the research, and uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't mean to. Right. The pry company has no. You're not prying. We yeah. we're fully open. Uh, yeah. The company has about uh, sixty people working there. Each book has its own editor, mm -hmm. and uh, people. Uh, and assistant editors, maybe one, two, or three assistant editors per book, depending on the complexity of updating it. Mm -hmm. And really, you, we can talk about information all we want. The key is to have accurate information. Exactly right. So we put our number one emphasis on the quality of the data. And we have very good people who uh, work very hard to research these listings. Uh, we never publish a book without having contacted every organization in the directory and verified the information that we have. At the organization, not the individual level? At the organization level primarily, yeah. Yeah. but also we cross-cut that with contacting certain individuals also. Well, I tell you, it sounds to me like you're doing something like uh, rivaling the Library of Congress, or, or in, a, in a certain sense, doing in a sense. it. In, in, in a sense, it's, it's that kind of thing. You said you have, uh, I commend you, you must have a great many people with academic training and do you have, uh, does bibliograph uh, or, or editorial training? What kind of, what kind of people are they? Anthropologists? I, I know, I was told. Discipline, you know, no, systems analysis or? No, no? Um, I was told that initially many of our editors were, came out of the Peace Corps. Uh-huh, interesting. And I think we do have a tradition of, um, hiring and employing uh, talented people of whatever background they happen to be. So, but uh, I think I might be the only uh, anthropologist. The only I, anthropologist. I know I'm the only anthropologist, but we have comparative literature. We have people from all kinds of backgrounds. Now, you're, 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 as we tick them off, and of course, uh, we don't, you know, there's 11, and they, the corporate law, the government, and so forth, uh, they tend to be people that are in the, the business and or government uh, I don't know, uh, part of our society. Uh, can you envision this? There are other aspects of leadership. Leadership, after all, is defined by the criteria by which you say somebody is a leader. Right. They're a leader in economic terms, in the business sense, or in power terms by the governmental sense. That's one thing. There are others. There's philosophical leadership. Right. There's artistic leadership. There's other kind. There's anthropological yes. research leadership. Yes. There's scholastic leadership, uh, this sort of thing. Do you intend ever to be able to go into those more subjective, if they are, or murky or, or less clear-cut realms of expression, human expression that is uh, leadership but is not normally thought of? In, in, I mean, well, the, definitely, beyond yes. Beyond the political, economic Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I can certainly see us covering um, the major cultural institutions of the country. Uh, definitely the major universities of the country, and those are possible ideas down the road. So um, we do envision ultimately uh, a well-rounded database covering all aspects of uh, the leadership of the United States. All right, all aspects of the, including some of these other areas that are not. Well, part not of the not leadership in anthropology. Part. Not leadership in anthropology. No. That would be too narrow. But it would, but if we have, a, if I may, and I, we're here in dialogue okay. here, uh, it, uh, if we were to have a, a publication marquee, uh, who's who in America, which has been a publication that has tried to identify in their right. light, by their lights, the right. leadership of America, they have 
Well, we Margaret Mead was in there, right? And uh, Ashley Montague and others. They didn't Margaret stick Mead, only to. Yes, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And that was part of the American leadership. If you say it's American leadership, but you're That's not going to have the leading anthropologist. Something's well, being left out, isn't it? <laughs> or not? If or, Margaret Mead was on the board of one of our corporations, she would be in the book that way. Or if she right, was, right. if she was uh, one of the people running, well, in her case, I think she was the American Museum of Natural History. Right. Uh -huh. We will, if, we, if and when we do our cultural institutions mm -hmm. uh, type directory, we would include people from the Museum of Natural History. We get at leadership through leading organizations, yes, through leading institutions. All right. Well, that's all right. That, that in, and I'm not saying that, that in and of no. itself is fine. Right. And that's an incredibly important role. Is there anyone else that's doing this on the scale? We don't the think so. Who's your, we don't your, think so. I mean, it's the, the, We don't think I'm so. Sorry, I think it's one of the most important things going on in our society now that you're keeping this thing together and there's not somebody else. I'm sorry. Well, there, we, there is competition. Um, uh, in directories of Congress and other aspects of government. There's other competition in the corporate world. There's famous law directories, different from ours. But I think we're the only ones who view it as the leadership of the United States, uh, as opposed to these independent directories in specialized fields. Yeah, and you're, you are reaching then toward this systems or broader thing where you, Definitely. you you could have stuck to Congress, but you've decided to We could have to stuck to Congress, out. but we, yeah. we branched out. Do you see any parallel at all between you and what Brian Lamb's tried to do with C-SPAN, where they've done that in the electronic media? I suppose there isn't a really a thing. You're, we, we should say, maybe I could say in your own uh, behalf yeah. in a certain sense, this not only gives the names, but it gives telephone numbers, up-to-date right. telephone numbers. If they've changed their extension, it's in there in the That's last true. quarter and so That's forth. True. So you know exactly how to get through to these people. It's very That's pragmatic true. and practically oriented. If you need to do business in the United States of all different kinds, mm -hmm. uh, you'll need to, to know people and know how to reach people. And that is essentially what people use our directories for. Right. Um, these go to libraries? Do yes. they? Do they go, uh, do libraries like uh, just, you know, at the local university level or something? Do, are yes. they tending to subscribe to these in the sense of beyond just one? Do they sometimes get all 11? Or do they, yes. They, is it becoming a major research? Uh, I think um, so. I know I, uh, they, you, you can find them at the New York Public Library, right. uh, at the Research Library of 42nd Street. It's, yeah, a, it's sure. always nice to go up there. and It is. You can see the yellow books uh, a mile away on the yeah. shelf. It's a good color. It stands out. It's a good color. Yeah. So, yes. Have, have you ever thought about... Um, and I, I know you, you've got your hands full, I'm sure, doing this. Uh, you're using, you, you bring it right up to date, right up to date, almost online, because you're, you've got these computer capabilities, mm -hmm. somebody changes. Is there anybody who subscribes online in a, in a, in a computer sense? We, you, you mentioned CD-ROM, uh, there's a possibility <clears throat> of being online. So that if there was a change tomorrow, that would already be picked up on or something? Or, do you understand? Rather we, than we, on a we, we will basis. be online, mm -hmm. um, and we'll be on the Westlaw online service, but I don't think it, in, a, in the beginning you'll have daily changes. But mm -hmm. that will come, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Sure you can't research the whole database every day. Mm -hmm. But we will, uh, we will be as current as possible once we do go online. It is amazing the abilities that the computers are giving us now to be able to scan information. And it, it, that's true. It, in our case, really, the bottom line is the editors and assistant editors right. making the calls and doing the research required to get the accurate information. And of course the computer is a great tool to organize that and keep track of people. But uh, if you want to know the core heart of what we're doing, it's editors on the phone, editors with faxes, with mail, uh, following the news, making sure they, they know what's happening in their field. Um, Going into new media, just while we're on that track, I mean, there are new media that are developing. We, we read a lot about we're coming into this digital world. It's, we're being digital, Mr. Negroponte tells us, and others. And there's okay. a big discussion of what this all means. So you're, you're trying to ride that, uh, the crest of that wave, that digital wave, and the new, mm -hmm. the new media that are entering. That's and true. does it ever bleed over into, if that's the right term, or osmosis or something, over into... Uh, electronic television media, 
or CD-ROM, you know, to where this quality of leadership could be shared with greater numbers of the citizenry. I mentioned Brian Lamb with the C-SPAN, or you know, do you understand what I'm saying? Is, is I think I understand what you're saying. Can you see there would be a, a crossover point between a print-oriented or a alphabetized oriented and a an electronic well, oriented sort um, of presentation ultimately, of it, leadership. Ultimately, there's a, there's a great deal of information here that people would be interested in just in a that's general true. news sense. I can ultimately people will be able to log on to internet and log into leadership directories and look up anybody they need to. That isn't true today, but no. but it won't be long that that will be happening. And you're trying to keep track of that yourselves from your own internal interests and what you're trying to do and be in true. touch with those de new, de Defin new media definitely. developers. Definitely, we in fact have amazing. created a, a new media division mm -hmm. uh, this year, and we are moving forward in all those ways. Mm -hmm. It's, re it's really, it's really. I, I mean, I have great congratulations to you for what you've done. Uh, you, you said you could present the world leader, the leadership of the United States. Have you ever thought expanding uh, world leadership, or is that um, you know, not we haven't not in, in our with any not in our yet. first wave of no. uh, of our database? Potentially, uh, world leaders in the United States. Yes, the, as I understand. But, but uh, at one time we, we did have a directory of international corporations um, and we may eventually someday do that but right now we're, we're focusing on the United States. One wonders because it, particularly in the corporate world uh, it is increasingly multinational and global That's and true. the superhighway is That's international true. and GATT has passed and things that are beginning true. to move into a global economy and you know, these things are interrelated. That's true, and uh, I, I agree with you, but right now we're doing what we do best. Yes. And we're, since uh, everything is based on the quality of the information, we are focusing on locally on the United States. Well, I'll tell you that, you've, you've, taken, you've taken on a great deal. You've taken on a great deal, right. and you've done it extremely well, if I, I may did. say so. Right. From my perspective, I was okay. very taken with it, and I want to just congratulate I didn't realize it was a 20-year effort, but a lot went into it. But that's the kind, of, it seems to me, that's a sort of um, uh, a pattern that comes out entrepreneurially in our society and so forth that begins to give us, uh, you know, the information that people, particularly like people say, even in a small way like myself in the media, find it extremely interesting. It's very relevant. And I want to just really thank you, thank you. and Thanks congratulate you. Me. Not at all. I congratulate you and everyone there at the, at the directories. Uh, and would remind you, we've only just touched the surface of this very interesting organization. If uh, uh, called again, and we've been talking with the publisher here in New York of this interesting organization called Leadership Directories Incorporated in the telephone book in here in New York yes. and Washington office. And as we well. have a Washington office also. Washington office as well. And that being uh, David Hurwitz, he's publisher, and we're very happy to have been able to present that to you. Look for the row of yellow books at your local library, Definitely. and uh, maybe perhaps in the research facility of your own corporate or institutional structure. Yes. And I congratulate you very much on the work and wish you and all Thank the you. editors there, right. anthropologists and all, right. all the very best as they plot into the, as they help to define this new informational environment that you're having so, had such a role in, in helping to define, if I may say okay. so. Thank you. And we here on Conversations would uh, thank you for viewing and invite you to tune in. We'll be coming back again on Conversations next week. That's it for this particular week. Again, uh, we'll see you next weekend. Uh, Dave, once again, thank you very, very thank much you. indeed. Thank you. Until next time. Thank you.